In this recording, I am going to talk about a technique to parse large PDFs while maintaining the context of the PDF. And then I'll show how to summarize large PDFs using a technique called map reduce. I'll also uh, go through a code through which I have implemented this uh, technique. So, so what was the motivation for me to, to create this? I actually had two motivations. The first motivation was for me to summarize the ar archive paper on large language models so that I can quickly grasp the concept of the paper. So there are so many archive papers on language models right? going through each of them um, end to end. It's, it's uh, I'll not say difficult, it's time consuming. And uh, the pace with which language models or the generative AI is evolving, it is important to save some time uh, while um, going through this knowledge articles and uh, grasping the knowledge. So that was one motivation. There is one more motivation, which I will not be able to talk here. That's more um, confidential. So th that, that, that was the motivation. Now the challenges, right? Challenges for um, doing summarization on large PDFs primarily three. Um, first of all, the PDFs are unstructured. How do you, like when you chunk the PDFs, and I'm not going into um, the details of why we need uh, chunking, uh, because uh, I'm uh, assuming that is uh, the basic uh, RAG pattern and everybody understands uh, RAG now. It's, it has become... Uh, mainstream but um, coming back to the chunking part right so when i chunk this pdf documents how do i ensure that when i chunk i do not um i i do not um lose the context of the chunk while um creating those chunks. For example, if there is a section and I just arbitrarily chunk it, I might be chunking it uh, at any uh, position in that section. So the next part of the section does not have any context of what has been said earlier, right? That is one problem statement. Second is there are complex tables, the tables within PDFs, right? Not all of them are simple row column based. I tried with tabula, it did not work uh, uh, perfectly. Um, the pi PDF, pi mu uh, PDF, uh, right? Oh, I, I could not make them work uh, uh, perfectly, right? So some of sometimes the tables were parsed correctly. Sometimes uh, the relationships between the columns and the tables um, are completely uh, disarranged. And uh, it was getting very difficult for the language models to understand the tables. So that's when I, I thought like, it probably will require a more a traditional machine learning based layout parsing technique to extract the tables. And that's what I am I'm going to uh, uh, talk about today, like what I used to do this layout parsing. And the third, once you extract the tables, how do you make the LLM understand the table content? What is the best way to make the LLM understand the content of the table? Right. So these are the problem statement. The solution, I wanted to um, walk through the solution so that when we go through the code, we can come back and uh, understand uh, it better. Right. So I start with a PDF, this is an archive document. Let me actually go to that archive document. So this is the archive document that I have taken, right? Which uh, very interesting one. Um, there's like, uh, you can go through it uh, 
at your leisure time, but uh, it's uh, very interesting where it talks about lost in the middle, how language models use long context, right? So it has sections, like it has um, introduction, then section two is um, language model, then section three talks about experiment setup and all. And at the end, we have the tables, right? These are the tables, model, there are the tables. I ignored the figure for now because at this point of time, I did not find a good technique, even with GPT-4, which is multi-model, for those models to actually do a good question answering based on the figure. In fact, I think it is practically not possible right now. I tried some uh, image captioning technique. The image captioning models that I tried from uh, Hugging Face were not that great. They were not able to explain uh, the images better. I think in this space, um, a custom uh, captioning of the images, mm -hmm. uh, custom captioning model probably will need to be created. But as of now, I have not... Uh, uh, seen GPT-4, uh, although being multimodal, not capable of uh, answering questions based on what there is in the figure. So I ignored this for time. I'm looking for a solution and I'll make another recording when I get a solution, but I'm actively looking for a solution. Right, so this is the document that I have... Uh, uh, taken. Uh, so after I get the document, I use Adobe Extract API to do the layout parsing. What Adobe Extract API does, it takes the PDF and it gives me two outputs. One is a one is the entire structure of the PDF in a JSON document, plus number of Excel documents where the tables are extracted. The tables are extracted in Excel documents. And I'll, I'll soon show you uh, how it looks like. But the Adobe Extract API, what, what is the Adobe Extract API? Let's take a look at it, right? So the PDF Extract API included with the PDF Services API. So I'm using the uh, free tire uh, uh, service now. Uh, which has some limitation. I think it is 500 uh, PDFs per day. Uh, that's the limitation, which is enough for me for uh, to show this demonstration. Right? So it's a cloud-based web service that uses Adobe Sense, Sensei AI technology to automatically extract content and structural information from PDF documents, native or scanned, and to output it in a structured, structured JSON format the surface extracts text, complex tables, and figures, right? I'll put this link in my recording so that you can go through the entire uh, overview of uh, this service. Um, but it extracts text, complex tables, and figures, and give me a JSON document with the layout structure. Let's see how it looks like, right? So when I extracted it, right? I extracted it under this PDF document. So if you see, it gave me, this is the JSON that I get, right? This is the JSON which, um, which encapsulates the entire structure of the document. So if you look at, uh, for an example, let's take an example, right? So we, um, let's start from the top. It will be easier for understanding. Right, so if I go to my document, right, so if I see where this abstract is, while recent language models, right, if I try to find this, right, this text is there, and this is the path, right, so it is saying it's a paragraph, right, and um, the heading is abstract, Right. So if now, if I want to chunk it based on H1, which is uh, 
the top having uh, top header or if i want let's say i want to which i did by uh, the second level of heading i can do that as well now i can chunk it by this uh, label by looking at this label in fact i created a custom parser for that so that will ensure that when i now chunk by looking at this label i am taking an entire uh, section uh, itself right which mm -hmm. Um, based on this document, uh, it seems that that every section is um, having the entire context for that section. So this is how uh, it it uh, extract the extract API. This is what it did. It gave me this. It gave me this and all the tables that are within the document are extracted as. XLS file, right? So for example, if I take a look at uh, this one, right? This was the first table. It let, let it open. Um, so if you see, it says model book uh, E, right? So let's see what that is. Sometimes it may not be, the headings may not be uh, all correct, but uh, it says model. Closed book, Oracle, right? It did it correctly, right? Model, closed book, Oracle. This is how I get the uh, this table. Similarly, um, the other tables are also extracted. These all these tables are extracted as uh, uh, Excel files, right? For example, if I take a look at this, this is this uh, this table here, um, this table here. So very, uh, I think it, it did a very good job in, in extracting the table in Excel file, right? So that is what the Adobe Extract API gave me. Then I wrote a custom JSON parser to parse the JSON, chunk this PDF, into respective sections. For example, I had a separate introduction uh, chunk, language model chunk, multi-document QA chunk. Um, and if we, let's take a look at that. So when I chunked it, so if you see now, I'm able to chunk the abstract and the introduction together. Then the section two um, in a separate chunk, the section three in a separate chunk, section four in a separate chunk, right? That is what this custom JSON parser that I wrote, uh, wrote did that, right? I was able to now chunk it into contextual sections, right? Or context aware chunks, right? So this was my extraction part, right? So after extracting this, I then, my, my actual, the summarization, stuff uh, starts right so for the summarization i used langchain's implementation of map reduce summarization which is this option here right and i'll go through it when i go through the code i'll go through it uh, in details explaining what each chain is doing there are three chains that are used here to explain what each chain is doing but before that let's understand the flow so i used a text loader to convert all these sections into uh, the document structure, Langchain document structure. Then I create it, a map prompt. Now this map prompt, I first tried in Langchain hub. I'm going to show that to you also. So the map prompt takes each of these uh, sections individually, created a summary of each of the sections, which it then gives it to the reduce prompt. Reduce prompt takes the summaries of all of them and creates one final summarized version of the PDF. That is the whole flow. I hope you are still with me. This is probably, this probably will be a little longer uh, recording. There are multiple concepts that I'm going to show, multiple things that I'm going to show you, uh, but I hope it will be interesting. So the, 
uh, things that I'm going to show you now in the code is the extraction part, the summarization part, and also how you can use Langchain Hub to test your prompt before actually using it in a program, right? Let us go into the code now and we'll go through it very, very slowly so that we understand each and every step, right? So let me start with the main section, right? What did I do? All right. So <clears throat> this is where my input PDF is, right? When I run extract API, it actually uh, gives me the JSON and the tables that I mentioned in a zip format. So this is the output path of the extract API. In my custom parser, I first unzip it into this location. And then finally, I um, all the chunks that I create, I put it into this chunk directory, right? Step one, right? I do a parse PDF where I take the input file path, which is that uh, PDF that I've showed earlier, right? Now, if I go to the parse PDF, right? So if you see, this is what the extract API does, right? So I have created a um, account to get the get the uh, client uh, key and the uh, um, client secret key and the uh, client API key, right? Uh, it, it requires uh, those two keys. Um, you can get that um, from the free trier, right? So I um, take those, I, I create the credentials, then in the extract uh, PDF options, I say that I want to extract both text and tables from the PDF, right? And I want to save the results into the output path, right? This is where it saves it as a zip. Then I unzip it into my, um, the unzipped uh, folder, right? That's, so uh, that's what I did, right? I unzipped it. So first I get this uh, zip file, right? Now when I, uh, this code, when I unzip it, I get the JSON, which has the layout of the PDF and all the tables, right? After that starts my chunking exercise, right? So for the chunking now, I open the JSON document, right? I read the JSON document and the path that I showed you, right? Those, those are, those I captured in the uh, elements list, right? So when I say uh, parsed file equal to open file name, if I open this, right? So let me actually um, go there and show it to you. So let's so when I parse it, oops, right? So the elements key for the uh, each element, right? From each of the element, I look at the path, right? What the path is, right? Let me go back to the code, right? So if I, I mentioned that I did the chunking by the second level of header, right? I find whether it's a second level of header, right? If it's a second level of header, there is some um, logic here to see if it is a first time header, don't create another file, don't close the previous file, right? There's a uh, logic to ensure that I, I chunk at uh, the H2 level, right? So if I hit the first header, I don't, I, I keep on writing, when it comes to the second header, first I close the previous file. I create another file to um, take the uh, second um, uh, header, right? And if I find a table, and this is where I had to use some a regular expression. So if I find a, uh, in the path, if I find a table, I uh, and the table can be like, if there are multiple tables, right? It can be table uh, within, um, square brackets, one, two, three, four, right? So this is what I'm searching. Like if I find a match, then I read the XLS file. I read the XLS file from this tables folder because it has now put in the tables folder. 
I read the XLS file and convert it to markdown. And that's very important to note why markdown. So why, first of all, like when I converted it to a CSV and tried to uh, create a chunk and had uh, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 to read CSV, I found a lot of inconsistencies. Sometimes it is able to understand the CSV format. Sometimes it is not able to. But when I converted it to Markdown, I was able to find out, although GPT 3.5 was still inconsistent, GPT 4 gave me a very consistent answer um, with the Markdown uh, format. Right? GPT 3.5 was failing uh, not much, but I'll say 90, 92, 95% of the time it was good. 5% of the time it was, was failing. But the Markdown was giving me um, very consistent results with GPT-4, right? So this code, this parsing code uh, helped me to create the chunks that I showed. Now the uh, PDF is chunked into this uh, 10 chunks, right? Which are now context aware chunks, right? And we saw them earlier. Each of them is at the um, H2 level, second level of header, right? So that is the first step, right? Which was to parse and chunk the file. Step two is where then I used text loader of uh, Langchain to read all these chunks into um, a document schema of Langchain, right? So this one gives me, so when I, uh, I run this, I get uh, all the chunks as a document schema in the document list. This is the document list. Step three is where my summarization process starts now. Right? This is where I create an instantiation of uh, uh, the OpenAI model. I gave my map prompt. And I would see here, I have pulling it from the Langchain hub. Let me go to the Langchain Hub and show you the beauty of uh, that feature. So if I go to Langchain Hub, right, this is where my prompts are. The map prompt is here, right? Map chain. So without writing a single piece of code, right, I can first check whether the prompt is working correctly or not. How did I do that? So I wrote this prompt and then I took a chunk, like let me take a bigger chunk, right? Let, I took a chunk like this, right? And I asked it to, I gave it a document and I asked it to create the main theme, summarize the main theme, right? Of it, right? So this is what I got from the map chain, right? So this is the map chain part, right? This is the this is the the prompt. I pulled the prompt from the hub. I created the map chain using this prompt. Then I'm creating the reduce prompt. Now, what does the reduce prompt does? If we go back to the diagram, the map prompt for each of those ten sections, it has given me ten summaries. The reduce prompts will now take those summaries and create one single prompt or, or one single uh, summarized document, right? So the reduce uh, chain prompt, let's take a look at the reduce uh, prompt as well. Right? What was the reduce prompt? In fact, I think we did not look at the map prompt also. So the map prompt was, a, you are a helpful chatbot and an expert in extracting the main themes from a given document. You have provided a set of documents below based on this set of documents, please, please identify the main themes, right? So this map prompt um, with all those documents, identify the map themes, created the summarize of each of the documents separately. After that, I gave it to the reduce prompt. The reduce prompt is like this. You are an expert in distilling content based on a set of summaries of main themes. Below is a list of doc summaries. Take this and distill it into a final consolidated summary of the main themes, right? So here, the whatever the map chain has produced, I give it as an input to the reduce chain. And the reduce chain finally gives me the final um, 
summarized uh, portion, right? But uh, let's see how we how I stitched it together in a um, in a uh, reduced document chain, right? So I have the map chain this uh, created here, reduced chain created here. Then I created the reduced document chain where I passed the so the combined documents chain is actually uh, taking the reduced chain. So the reduced chain is using a staff document chain. Uh, what staff document chain is like? All those document summaries, uh, right, will be passed together into the reduced chain so that it can create a summary, right? So the reduced chain um, is passed as LLM chain to the combined uh, documents chain. So when I create the reduced document chain, I give it the combined document chain, which is actually the reduced chain. Uh, I then give the collapsed document chain. What is what is this collapsed document chain? Now, when the reduced chain tries to look at all the summaries and combine it, right? There may be a situation where it may see that the the token length of all those document summaries goes beyond the uh, token limit of the module, right? So I here I took GPT three point five sixteen k, so the max token is sixteen thousand. What combined document chain does before it hence before the reduced chain can take it over the combined documents chain uh, which is also the same prompt right takes those document summaries that i have given now and recursively takes 16 um, uh, thousand uh, of those tokens right and recursively further summarizes all of them until it ensures that the final output from the collapsed document is 16,000. And that is what is then passed to the, the actual reduced chain so that it can summarize based on those 16,000, the, the content of uh, the 16,000 tokens. Right? So the reduced document chain therefore has the, has the uh, collapsed document chain and the combined document chain. Collapsed document chain ensures that the final document summary that goes to the reduced chain is not uh, not uh, going beyond the threshold of the the or, or the token limit that the uh, model has right and then finally i create the map reduced document chain this is my final um, chain which combines the map and the reduced part right so i give it i say that this is my map chain this is my reduced chain Right. This is the reduced chain. The map. This is the map chain. Right. And the variable that I'm going to pass to the uh, map chain is the documents. Right. This is where I'll uh, pass all those uh, chunks. And uh, finally, when I run the map reduce chain, I'll get the uh, summary of of the document. Right. One um, caution here. This is a relatively expensive uh, chain. Uh, I ran it three times. Uh, it cost me around uh, 0.78 cents uh, for those three runs. I'm not going to run it again. I, I wanted to save some uh, uh, money in my uh, subscription. But when I run it, uh, the output that it gives is like this, you see. So what it did is it... Uh, read all those uh, chunks and based on the chunk the final summary is the main themes identified from the provided set of documents are it gives one two three four like these are the things uh, summarization of the the whole content of the pdf and finally it says overall the main theme revolves around language model performance factors affecting performance evaluation protocols challenges in multi-document question answering and token count and performance analysis. And if I read all this six or this five points, I get a gist of what the document is talking about. Right. So that's all I wanted to share. I know that this is uh, a relatively um, longer uh, recording compared to what I have been doing so far, but there are a lot of things that I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, so that's why it became uh, a little long. Thank you. Bye-bye.